So I'm here to talk about the project that we initiated in 2022. Thank you for the invitation to the Global DH um, Advisory Board and community as well. I'm excited to hear your feedback about this. We initiated this project, Public Artist Resistance in San Jose, California, a walking tour um, with the aid of a, a Humanities for All quick grant from the California Humanities Council, we engage students, faculty, and community partners to identify just 12 public works of art among the some 300 pieces in the downtown area of San Jose. Once we had constructed the narrative of the walking tour, we opened it up for free registration to anyone who was interested. With sustainability in mind, my co-director and I also created two pathways for free versions using a free mobile app that doesn't require data to take the tour, as well as a, the website with high res versions with much more narrative that uses Linktree to easily navigate. We also blanketed downtown businesses and cultural centers with the map designed by one of our students. The project has been so successful that professional organizations have requested in-person tours for, for senior outings or for K through 12 learning opportunities. We wouldn't have been able to create this robust tour without the help of the local arts organizations and individual artists, but we had to do a lot of work to earn their trust, especially to verify that we weren't there to steal their work as some sort of boosterism to attract people into downtown San Jose. Though one of our community partners, the San Jose Downtown Association, wanted us to do exactly that. We're working at the speed of trust with all of these constituencies, an ethos that, for my part, I borrowed from working on many large digital humanities projects and in thinking about the Collaborators' Bill of Rights. San Jose State University is part of the 23 campus California State University system that serves upwards of 1 million students. The state master plan differentiates the CSU from the University of California as educating the state's workforce instead of educating the thought leaders, but that line has been erased over the last decade or so. SJSU is unique in that we are in the middle of Silicon Valley and the city of San Jose is, we're one city block, the entire campus. We serve primarily first generation college students and are a Hispanic serving an Asian American and Native American Pacific Islander serving institution to federal designations with the Department of Ed at the federal government. With 35,000 students, San Jose State is second only to San Diego State in terms of student numbers. With all of that, SGSU is like a small government with the same labyrinthine red tape that can stymie any community group that would like to work with the university. And downtown San Jose is a complex series of business associations, neighborhood associations, cultural centers, art institutions, and artist-run organizations, along with major redevelopment in, uh, in anticipation of Google's new campus about one mile from SJSU's campus. Adobe and other tech companies already live in downtown San Jose, but interact moderately, moderately with, the, uh, ac with the campus's academic side. Artist organizations like Empire 7, SJ Walls, and Local Color are creating art on blighted buildings and bringing beauty to the downtown area that was most recently devastated by the COVID-19 pandemic with lots of businesses moving out and people moving out of um, uh, high density housing. There's art everywhere though, not just on SJSU's campus. Of course, there's the art commissioned in front of the city of federal buildings, and this is the 12 pieces of art that we worked on. But I mean that there's art being created by people of and from San Jose to highlight the, for instance, Chicano Chicana heritage, to celebrate Vietnamese culture, to surface the role of colonizing missions on indigenous peoples, to keep acts of resistance at the forefront of people's minds. That's what our public art as resistance tour set out to do to value those voices through collaborating on a walking tour that touched on as many different cultural representations that $5,000 could get us. Working with an urban geographer and art historian, a museum curator and a historian, we discover that arts institutions were keen to collaborate, but artists organizations were still dubious. So we worked at what was called the speed of trust. And to gain this trust, we paid attention to details and artists' agency. 
as the digital humanist on the project, I deployed methods of minimal computing and really thought about things like the collaborator's bill of rights in order to work through some trust issues. Six of the 12 public artworks are murals on sides of buildings that will most likely be redeveloped, which means the buildings will eventually be demolished along with the incredible artwork. The San Jose Downtown Association notes that artists are aware that public murals are intended to be ephemeral and are encouraging artists to document, like you see in the video here, the creation and their process as much as possible. For this particular mural, it's on the side of a building called, um, a, with a restaurant in it called Mezcal, and it's called Al Alabrejas. It demonstrates maintaining and celebrating of identity in response to pressures to assimilate. The retention of identity solidifies the connection to Oaxaca, forming a bridge to San Jose, infusing it with the Zapotec culture, broadening its prism of diversity. The video included on the slide was posted by Stephen Reese in 2019. To document the production of the mural itself, on our project's webpage dedicated to this mural, we ensured that Stephen would receive credit for this video by embedding the YouTube video code onto the page instead of downloading and embedding the video onto our webpage itself. If we'd done the latter, SJSU would take ownership of the video instead of linking it back. This digital through line also creates a sort of provenance so the artist's work doesn't get lost or co-opted by a large university. The use of attribution and code that can send users to the original site is a core functioning of the infrastructure for digital assets associated with this project. One thing that we did find is that a lot of the artists articulated the value of their work through things like Instagram stories, which are very ephemeral and difficult to locate. There are, of course, the more official entities that commissioned pieces like this one from Ruth Asawa. The City of San Jose Public Art Program commissioned this boss relief bronze in 1994, convincing Asawa to work in a new medium. The memorial sits at the face of the federal building, but is somewhat obscured by a light rail fence and really lacks any sort of lighting to highlight this important piece. While the memorial symbolically commemorates the experience of all Japanese Americans, it has a special poignancy in San Jose, whose thriving Japanese and Japanese American community experienced forced removal, incarceration, and loss of property as a result of Executive Order Number 9066 in 1942. This piece is only two blocks from SJSU's campus, where the campus was used to process those who were sent to the internment camps, a real stain on the history of SJSU that is definitely discussed during the tour itself. One last very unusual mural that captivates all of our tour participants is the 100 block mural that has 100 different artists offering a point of view in a three foot by three foot square. The mural is complex to capture its digital footprint with so much context embedded within each square. 100 different artists, many of whom don't have a discernible digital representation or footprint. Local Color SJ commissioned the piece, and though this artist organization offers every individual square on its website, it doesn't identify the artists for each. So we have a dilemma of how to create that attribution and then link back to those artists themselves. Here's the real dilemma, though. This entire building is slated for quote unquote redevelopment, which is really means it's going to be demolished in the next two years as the downtown area is redeveloped. We've begun conversations with the artists organizations to create a virtual reality version of these murals. Um, but the problem is uh, the conversation with our lab director has begged the question, how do we represent these murals through the voice of the artists, through the voices of students who perform the research on the murals, through the stories created by each square, and how will we ensure that special equipment or apps are not needed that will increase the digital divide for those who may not have access to high-speed mobile internet or broadband or even a mobile phone? We find more answers in augmented reality solutions than continuing with the idea of a virtual reality immersive experience. We really have to write more grants for this one, though, in particular. 
These questions about sustainability bring me to the final aspect of the project. How will it live beyond the in-person walking tours? How can we engage the largest audience without necessarily making everyone walk in person around the five kilometer route? With sustainability in mind, I created two pathways for free versions using a free mobile app that doesn't require data to take the tour. The app GPS My City requires downloading and a somewhat complex search for finding the actual walking tour, but once downloaded, the user can navigate to each work of art by reading the directions then has, that has a 200 word description and it doesn't contain any sort of embedded videos or images or even a link back to our website so they can watch more. The PDF map that I showed you earlier is embedded on our project website and people can download it to their phones or print it out. If going through this route for a self-guided tour, we encourage users to print it out and then use the link tree to easily navigate. Our original idea, which would have been terrific, was to embed QR codes on each work of art, possibly a sticker. That would allow anyone walking by to learn more about the works of art, but it really became a sticky issue when dealing with artwork on federal property or the longevity of a sticker attached to an outside wall, although that would have been the greatest. There are several different artist organizations and nonprofits involved in commissioning all of these murals on public buildings. Our project encapsulates not just art, but also the importance of considering space and place, especially as a building is slated for demolition. So now we also have to work at the speed of trust with incoming developers to help them understand the value of public art and how to contribute to preserving that 30 foot mural on the side of the building they're about to knock down. We use all of these methods as a it, through minimal computing. So we really choose things that are of necessity. But for everybody, it's always at the speed of trust. Thank you.